You ever that series when you're a kid? You know that one where you have like the protagonist who goes on a journey to collect these items and then he bring the items to save the world or change their destiny or something like that. And each one is in like the story is divided up into separate books and each book is like a hundred pages long about how they get the one item. And then at the very end of whatever items they collect, the series starts over again and it's a new set of items. And it just goes on and on. Yeah. So, the book I'm reviewing today is Brief Story by Miyuki Miyabi. And it's, the basic plot line is basically that. It's about a boy named Watu Mitani who wants to change his destiny. So he goes to this magical world called Vision to collect five gems in order to... Um, obtain his wish to change his destiny. And it definitely has that nostalgia of the children's books you read when you were little, but there's also something much harsher in the series itself. So obviously Brave Story is a lot more than just that simple plot, mainly due to the fact that it's 816 pages of pure story. This is not, was not something I prefer, was prepared for when I bought it, Next time I will check how long the book is. Yeah. So, basically, Brave Story is divided into two parts. You have the first part where you learn about Watru and his family life and his friends and what his friends are going through and what kind of his world is. And then you have the second part, which is the longer part, where you go into Vision and you learn about Vision and how it's affected. So, in the first part... You have Watcher, who's a normal 11-year-old boy, and his biggest concern is basically saving up his allowance to buy the next video game of the series he likes. And through him, you meet his other classmates, like his friend Ka Katsu? Katsu, I think. I don't remember their names that well. And um, another kid named Mitsuri, who is also going through a whole lot of stuff at his house that I... I think the biggest thing about this book is it's very harsh. It's very dark and grim in some sense, but not like not as grim as Batman. I mean, that's pretty dark. But it's not as light and fluffy as like children's books that have similar plot line. Um this is mainly due to Watto learning about his parents' upcoming divorce. And through Watto you see his shift and changes between looking, respecting his father and respecting his mother. And you also see how his mother is very, very reliant on Walter's father. And him leaving her is devastating for her. And she becomes a very manipulative mother. And of course with Walter, he does what she, she tells him to do. Like, it's his mother that's how he's been raised and I think it's like the first part is about him coming trying to understand what's happening to him and not taking it too well and you also learn about Mitsuri who is also going through a hard life his father has killed his mother and he is now being raised by his aunt who's only 20 and, of course, she is not prepared for raising after her 11-year-old nephew, who she's probably never really even got to talk to that well. And he decides to go to Vision in order to change his destiny, in order to... I'm not really sure what he wants to do. Become something to feel needed, maybe? Or to disappear? Like, I don't know. Walter also learns of Vision... Um, through Mitsuri, and he is think he is interested in Vision, but he doesn't know what to think of it. And then we hit the dark reality in which Wataru's mother mm. yeah, I don't know how to say this. Wataru's mother goes off the deep end. I think that's the easiest way to say it. 
and Walter was really shocked by this. He doesn't know how to take it. So he goes into vision because he blames his father and his father's lover for driving his mother to this. And then we go into the second part. The second part of the book is introducing vision. Now, we see a bit of vision in the first part when Walter accidentally goes to see it, but the second part is more of exploring it. So, vision is a very interesting world in that it is influenced by the minds of the travelers such as Walter and Mitsuru. Um, the vision that Walter sees is very different from when Mitsuru go, from what Mitsuru sees. Um, essentially, what you have in vision is you have two spe, well, two three species. The first species is the humanoids, and the second species is the animal kin, or the kin folks. So they are the water kin, the animal kin, and the bird kin, and they're basically and um, human-like animals. Vision is very similar to our world in the sense that it has war, it has civil unrest, it has racism. I'm not sure if it has a lot of sexism. I don't think that's in, that's introduced or talked about in this book. But essentially the major role is the two religions that are played out in this book. There is the one religion which believes that the goddess created vision and she has these honored travelers who come into Vision to help Vision and the travelers are considered good luck. So this is what Walter and Mitra are. The other Vision believes that the goddess is, the fa is a false god and the travelers are demons and therefore should be killed. So Walter goes into Vision while it's in the midst of basically ending. And from there you see his point of views and how they change. Essentially what Vision does is it helps Walter go through and understand what he's experiencing. It is what, what is happening in Vision is how Walter views his own world. And it's not simple in that it's just like how he views his small little neighborhood, but rather the outer world in its entirety. I think one of the most major effects that Vision has on Matru and how it is a reflection of his viewing of life is when he is introduced to this family, and it's um, a single mother and her daughter, and the husband has left them. And the reason why the husband has left is because he had a affair with this other woman who is now pregnant with his child. Walter decides to bring the father back. So he goes on to this journey to the swamp where he meets the the woman. And at the beginning he doesn't hate her. He talks to her and he feels sym sympathetic for her because he doesn't understand why she's being punished. But as the story goes on, he becomes this hatred as he sees that she is to blame for the father leaving this family and who where the daughter and the mother are very sick. And it basically ends with him murdering this woman and her unborn child. And this haunts him for the rest of the book. And in another instance, he meets the father who has abandoned the family and is very upset and ends up killing him too. The interesting thing is when he kills them, he blames them. He doesn't blame himself. He doesn't think he's done anything wrong. He thinks he's been driven crazy by the swamp mist. And as the story goes on, he comes to realize that he is at fault and he's allowed this anger to consume him, thereby killing an innocent child. So essentially by the end of the book Walter comes to terms with his parents divorce and realizing that it's not his fault and it's not their fault. It's just his parents don't work together anymore and in the end 
he's left. And it, at the end of the book, he realizes that he can't ask somebody to change his destiny. He has to change it for himself is entirely the message of it. The other character of Mitsuru is kind of like Watcher's foil in that he is much colder and harsher than Wataru. Um, unlike Wataru, Mitsuru is willing to kill innocent people to get the gems, to get to where he wants. He will put anybody in danger. He does not care about vision. He cares about changing his destiny. He cares about bringing his family back from the dead. And he doesn't care because for him, vision is not a real world. Vision is just something his mind has created. And you see that largely in the argument between the two. Because as the story goes, Mitsuru is kind of like the anti-hero. Because you understand why he's doing what he's doing, but it's terrible. And he's... How, how can you... I don't know. Like, he's killing innocent people, but you can't support that. You can't justify it. And there is no justification. And Walter realizes that he, at near the end, he can't justify Mitsuru. He can't save him. He's... He can't. It's just not possible. And for him... For Mitsuru, it's coming to terms that what he did was wrong. And there is no way he that he can make up for this. A lot of this book is about battling your inner demons. It is about coming to realize that you can't kill your demons, but accept them and move forward, not to let them hanger you down. Brave Story, if you're willing to, if you read a lot and have a lot of good focus on reading it, it is a great book. And there's probably a lot of stuff that I've missed. Manny, good luck.